price on. That's so Hello awesome. world. I'm gonna start to say that at some of my videos, most of them at the beginning. This video is kind of a quicker video. It's a reflection of thoughts and it is important for sure. Um, I wanted to say that, sorry, I'm burping. Have a drink, um, a monster energy drink. <laughs> um, I got up this morning and first of all, I wanna say, wow, it is incredible that like, how many videos I've done, how it's, um, it's taking place. There is now a, a metric that can prove this is now US history. And what I mean by that is one of the number one search terms last week, ways that people found this YouTube channel was through the, the searching the words verbatim US history. Um, and I knew that this would be significant 600 plus days ago when I was homeless in Wilkesboro, North Carolina, simply on the fact it's the birthplace of Robert C. Byrd, longest service center in U.S. history. I was homeless there for the second time. My dad had already made me homeless in the largest home in America, and in the poorest place in America, McDowell County, West Virginia. I went to his affiliation. Like, so close with the Center Joe Mansion. Center Joe Mansion every day since 2017 has been open. His office Washington DC basically at work working and he has been literally looking across his desk I'm my uncle Mike like hold on so I knew I knew all that was already woven into McDowell County history West Virginia history and with Robert C. Bird anyway I mean I didn't know what was gonna happen hoping I was to make it to Yale University find out what happened to my friend Chris at High Point it just Hopefully not have been homeless this long, right? But it didn't turn out that way. I've been homeless coast to coast because I have to be. And, um, I mean, think about that. I have literally been in the state of Nebraska, Ohio, Tennessee, Nevada, Colorado, uh, all the states, ocean to ocean, without a home in the greatest country in the world. That's actually happened. My father was sleeping with a seven-year-old boy. Extremely, I wouldn't really call it a stork. You know, it's not, it, it is so profound and negligent on the other individuals, the other boomers in McDowell County. People like the retired superintendent. Okay, Carolyn Phelan is somebody that we should always be thinking of right now as someone capable right now. So this very moment, tomorrow, next, tomorrow, next year, Carolyn Phelan, unless she has some sort of, you know, she's, she's in a coma, then she's cannot be considered, you know, she can't help it. She can't help a child molester victim. And Carolyn Phelan today, I believe, is pretty sure she's alive. She'll like drive a vehicle. Uh, she's not the only one. County Commissioner Cecil Patterson, West Virginia University President Dr. Gordon Gate. Supreme Court Justice, Chief Justice of the West Virginia Supreme Court, Tim Armstead. These are people that weren't homeless, never had to wrestle with the idea while homeless of killing their father who was sleeping with a seven-year-old boy. These are people that should have had absolutely, like, I'm going to do right. Nathan's in trouble. That boy is. Tom Cox is doing wrong. I am somebody that has every available resource there is at my disposal. To see that we do right, and I never did. All of those people completely failed. There's more, but we got Carol Chambers, um, who probably isn't in a direct. I came to her and said, My father said, the seminar boy, you should help. But I, she did, she did, um, the questionable with caring about U.S. veterans or posting about caring about homeless U.S. veterans. So before Memorial Day, I reached out to her. And her lack of ability to care and actually instead be extremely vile to me. I say I'm gonna have to deal with Conrad Cochran, her fiance. I mean, have, maybe she found love later in life. She's like retired since 65 plus, but it's always Conrad. But he was a veteran, he is a veteran of U.S. veteran of the Vietnam War. Um, a great silence. But 
beyond that, this video is not about that. I just want to say, I know this is now U.S. history. I knew a long time ago that this was going to be, you know, a very big thing of my life. Let's say, let's say that. When I was in Wilkesboro, I already knew this was going to be, you know, probably like the biggest thing that ever happened to me in my 30s. Let's put that one. Now what it is, it's become beyond that. It's already beyond that. If I die, if I get hit by a car right now, this is already likely, I think, to become... I don't know how to say it, but I don't want to talk about that. I'll talk about something else. And that is, I woke up this morning. I'll show this video. I woke up this morning, and um, the way I woke up was... I wanted to say this video is about compassion and finding it having it, the ability to have it, um, the heart is like muscle, if you don't use it, you can lose it, and those are the key messages here, but I woke up this morning, and this bomber, I didn't have myself turn, oh, it was just like, there was, like, I got so annoyed, here's what was going on, I woke up because he had his phone on, and he had, um, it was different strokes, his TV, you know, that, that noise from the phone, it just cuts through all the other noise, the natural noise in the in the room. And it was um, so irritating to me because this bomber had a TV playing and he had already fallen asleep. He's playing TV and he's falling asleep. And he's got a little dog next to him. So, yeah, um, you know, he's also probably getting social security. Think about the cost. Spoiler word. It's costing the world. He's not likely to be going back to work. He's not really. Um, you know, I just woke up, but I do have plans today to go get a housing assessment done, and you know, continue on my fight to defeat homelessness. There's some things I want to do today that are important to get done. And what you don't know yet is I haven't been in San Francisco the last couple of days. I left it. I left it because I had to. That is also another significant historical event in this U.S. history. I will be doing more video, uh, another video as soon as I can. I got most of it done, uh, it was recorded, but um, there's two actually, two events that just happened that are um, huge. Um, what happened to me and someone else, um, it's gonna be a big deal. So this is kind of a smaller video. Uh, but I wanted to say, I saw this guy and he's asleep. He scratches his butt with his hands down his pants and he, you know, he scratches his butt with his sleep with TV playing, awaking, you know, like interrupting my pace. It was like, it was like, you know, my old Zan, if you don't get much when you're homeless, well, he had to have his TV playing, but he wasn't even paying attention to it. How am not gonna go back to work? He's got this little dog. And I was just, you know, the whole, the his whole vibe and all, like the, everything, you know, keeping this member in existence. <laughs> and what, <laughs> just, it got very irritating me. And then I thought, you know, it's not a good way to start day. I introduced, I tried to have a moment of like take a breath and be like, well, he's, you know, sleeping for me is over. Go to him. It's not for him. But then I tried to think about there must have been a time when he, was doing something. I tried to put myself in his shoes. I just thought, you know, he's not a Denver brower, uh, homeless. It's unlikely. You know, I thought about like, what if he became one of the homeless dead boomers frozen in the snow in Denver that we have that you have to step over if you're a millennial and you're homeless. I just thought, you know, what if that happened and that little dog? Passion for that little dog. What if his bummer died in the show? And then I thought, you know, I thought about something like, this bummer is a black. And I thought about, what came to mind would have been, you know, anywhere in San Francisco, to me, a whole lot of this city is just a lot of history is happening here. And I think a lot about, like, like it has. It's just, it, to me, like this building here. As far as skate and everything, 
it, it really looks a lot like something you would see in Welch. And if you if you miss Welch, West Virginia, in like the 60s, you come to San Francisco now. It is just like, it has a lot of the same elements things that people miss. <laughs> <coughs> or people miss how Welch used to be. I definitely see it. But I want to say this um, individual probably, I thought about Duck Hunt. Remember Duck Hunt, Nintendo? Um, in the 80s, like that came out. I remember that kind of came out. I remember me and my dad playing it at Cherry Street, the dining room. I like the whole, whole you know, concept. And I thought about this idea. I did saw, so, you know, here in San Francisco, it is um, not Denver. We are on the ocean. And um, there is a different mix and group of people, you know, population is more diverse or just it's you know it's a different place and i thought about something that i don't think about very much as a gay white man i thought about like duck hunt when that came out in the 80s and the whole um interaction or i don't know what the right way is to say it but like um the uh tension and race relations between black people and asian people America, and I thought about like when Duck Hunt came out, you know that orange gun. What it must have been like for him, maybe, possibly, or someone he knew that was black, and like, when you know Duck, Duck Hunt came out because you know that was like the Japanese, and it was a big deal. The Duck Hunt, and I thought about you know there's probably black people out there that are boomers, you know that like when Duck Hunt came out, there was, you know, what if there family members or something was shot. You know, and then the Duck Hunt game exists and stuff. You know, that was the real defined orange gun and everything. And I thought about, you know, how how sad it might be. He might not have good affiliations with with that game or anything. And I mean, I know it's kind of a silly thing, but it's, just, it's where my brain went. And um, right here is this QR code and on it it says stop Asian hate. And I thought about, you know, all that that happened with COVID and just in general, not something. It's kind of like Gail Manchin caring about religious freedom outside West Virginia, like in Iran. It's like, and for her and her doing that is a beautiful thing. Uh, I was so happy when I found out about it. And we should be praying for Gail Manchin and everyone, and everything, but like we should be following her story, finding strength and compassion and hope what she's doing and just how forever beautiful it's making her and so i just you know kind of got a left the shelter but i was thinking about you know i right now i have a very hard time you know with this bummer right here the most of his time i didn't want to think about when he was a kid i was thinking about something he did as an adult probably having to tell like you know maybe his wife or someone that was maybe he was a stronger person when he's at the store and there was some you know just overall some bitterness and he was a strong one and tell people maybe you know don't worry about that game or what you know he's probably could have been, have been younger asian kids or something you know, i could say that that could have been you know a hard situation I feel it inadequate because there's so many people on YouTube that are homeless that are just judging me for like you know the way I talk or something and I'm like well I'm from the south but also I have tardive amnesia and um I don't care like but it's still I don't care what you're you're not helping and you're talking to someone who is surviving two worst nightmares at the same time um my father is a child molester I've been homeless for over 600 days for the second time, and I'm making U.S. history. So, um, you know, you could be helping, but you're not. You're like some of these comments, but I'm just like, you know, when he used to say the haters, this this world's been going around. So, <laughs> <coughs> I wanted to say those words in video. I have it up, and then I wanted to, you know, continue on my day for your homelessness, and then later I'll hope to be um releasing information but two events while i left san francisco came back um 
I don't want to get into it right now. Um, it was it was definitely a very big deal. Why I left, where I went to, how I got back, all what happened when I was there. All those things were a big deal. Um, also, what happens to the other person. Um, we need compassion. We need to be caring about the best homeless U.S. veteran in the world. The man of my dreams. He is doing all right. He's been through enough. This is affecting him probably more than anyone. I can't hug him right now. But I think he knows. I'm giving him the strongest force there is, and I'm not going to stop. So, with that in mind, have a beautiful day.